Hi, it's Ashley for the best podcast. I'm just going to talk about a few things today. Um, let's talk about Biflex Aquamax and Bifenthrin in general. Is it safe? Well, I believe it's safe. I've been using it for the last pretty much 20 years. It's the chemical that's been developed by FMC, but it's used to so widespread that it hopefully problems would have shown up on our, there's no long term problems, but it also was extensively tested before it was released. Um, I think the figure was $65 million was spent to develop the actual molecule itself by FMC, and it is a synthetic version of the pyrethrin plant. So the pyrethrin plant has natural occurring insecticides which are called pyrethrins and they basically affect every insect they touch and the synthetic version is meant to be exactly the same molecule but it actually has a residual effect whereas the pyrethrin naturally breaks down within a couple of days so that's the problem with the natural pipe roof you'd have to apply it every two days so even though it's natural it's a lot of more chemical so you're exposing everybody to a lot more chemical um, it's also cost inefficient the world would starve if we were to try to do natural pest control um, as far as biofentanyl goes it's not part of the old group of chemicals that were neonicotino neonicotinoids the original nicotinoids neonicotinoids are the newer birds of the nicotine based um, pesticide chemicals. So how's that for a bit of information? Most of those nasty dildrins and DDTs and all that were actually based on the nicotine plant and the nicotinoids. That's how bad nicotine is. It's what we use in the old days, the stuff that used to really knock you dead and build up in your system and, and destroy you. And that, that was in use up until the late 80s. Uh, until synthetic pyrethrins sort of took over because their safety is being investigated thoroughly and it's not it's night and day. Um, it's used extensively on our foods, which can be the problem, as in not dangerous to us, but it kills every insect it touches. So I believe that's what's causing a lot of the insect devastation is we're using products that are too good in too large amounts, in too large areas. Uh, agriculture, and other forms of industrial pest control account for 99% of all chemicals sprayed. The domestic pest control industry, which I'm a part of, and um, commercial pest control industry, which you can um, talk about as well, is only 1% of chemicals applied because we are a public facing uh, sector, I suppose. So we're not able to use chemicals the same depth and breadth than they can I don't know that we should either because it's so effective that the amounts we use already are, are minuscule so out of a litre of the Biflex Aquamax that I mix a litre of the pure chemical 900 mils of that is things to help it stick to surfaces and um, emulsifiers uh, antifungals things that keep the chemical stable and on the surface that they're sprayed on so only one tenth of the chemical that I mix is the actual active ingredient so it's important to look at Bioflex Aquamax as a whole as in um, it's water based so 90% of it you're not going to breathe in same with the bifenthrin it doesn't actually vaporize it doesn't become a gas so you can't breathe it in if you breathe in water droplets though so you need to be careful of that but it will not vaporize i think it will vaporize over 400 degrees celsius so unless you cook in the oven which is another thing to consider then you're going to be a, a fairly safe but one very important thing that I forgot to mention was the fact that bifenthrin is only four microns in size, which is minuscule, but the fact is our skin can only absorb two microns, so it's twice as big as what our skin can absorb. So Biflex 
Aquamax cannot be absorbed by human skin or pet skin. That's the best part about it. Whereas other um, chemicals have solvents in them. So 90%, most chemicals, 90% of them is solvents like toluenes and ethylenes to help, help absorb, uh, dissolve into the water and stick to things. Whereas bifenthrin is a suspended concentrate. So it actually never becomes part of the water-based mix. It's always a solid. It doesn't vaporize or turn into a gas or anything that can be breathed in or um, absorbed. It's um, good in that fact as in there's no toluenes and ethylenes because toluenes and ethylenes have been proven to give cancer and that's what my belief is with the glyphosate is 90% of the glyphosate's weed spray that, that's mixed into the water, 90% of that is toluenes and ethylenes and they've proven to be causing cancer. So. We've never used any toluenes and ethylenes or any sort of solvents in anything that we apply at Antipesto. We've only ever used Bioflex Aquamax or uh, Fipronil, which are both water-based and they don't need to have any solvents in them. So that's good in that regard. So the important thing about Bioflex Aquamax is you can't absorb it into your body. It can't vaporize or become a gas, so you can't breathe it in either. So as far as pest control products go, it's the safest one available on the market today and it's been in use for 20 years. So I'll let you get back into it. Just needed to tell you that because I forgot to mention the best part about bifenthrin, which is you can't absorb it into your skin, even if you are exposed to it. And the other thing is, even if you were to drink it, which is the only way to get it into your body, it wouldn't build up. It doesn't um, stay in your body for longer than three days. It's actually two days but I always overcautious when it comes to statistics. So after three days, your body doesn't have the bifenthrin it absorbed two days ago. That's fantastic, isn't it? So it doesn't build up in your system like the old chemicals used to do. I went off on a bit of a tangent there, I'm sorry. But the actual bifenthrin molecule has been excessively tested. Before I got into the pest control industry, having a scientific background, I just straight out read um, journals, scientific journals and studies and investigated um, all the chemicals and the one that used to scare me was chlorpyrifos because that was a very nasty chemical that I don't like at all because it's very old school nicotinoid and it's um I don't know if it was nicotinoid but it had that sort of smell to it and it was just full of industrial solvents and it was devastating to all life not just insects so the good thing about bifenthrin is it won't hurt an earthworm it won't hurt a lizard but it will devastate every insect it touches and that needs to be taken into consideration as well if you're trying to look after butterflies, bees or your own pets. Some people have pet insects. You've got to be considerate of all sorts of things. Um, basically, you only be targeting the species you want to get rid of, hopefully, which luckily in Australia, most of the pest species that we're targeting are introduced and they're not natives. So, apart from a redback, that's one native species. But at the same time, redback's a bit of overkill. The last person to die from redback bite was, I actually take that back, because one person did. Two people have died from redback bite since 1970. So it's at a stage now where if you're bitten by a redback, if you're a healthy person, they will not even give you anything. They will just monitor you in hospital for a while, make sure that you're okay. If you're young or very old and frail, they will give you antivenom and definitely take it a step further. But the danger of spiders is exaggerated in Australia and I'm at the stage now where I can get rid of ants without having to apply bifenthrin, I can use baits. So if you're looking for solutions, spray-free solutions, there's definitely solutions out there. It's just whether you're willing to pay, one, the extra cost, and two, slightly less inefficient and ineffective. So you will get rid of your pests, but it will take longer and it won't last as long. And that's the truth. Um, unfortunately, spray and pray works because the chemicals are so good, it will get rid of bugs. Um, it used to be a bit different a while ago before things like the neonicotinoids were really on the scene because it used to be quite an art form to get rid of uh, bugs, but now you can have it go back to the nest quite easily, which is good, costly, but good, and also terrible for bees. Get onto that too. Fipronil might need to be a separate discussion. Maybe you should go into it right now. Fipronil is the old, um, the newer, jazzier version chemical that was released by Termidor. I think about 20 years ago now. I think it came out a little while after the bifenthrin. And the best thing about the Termidor or Fipronil 
was that it would have a transfer effect, as they call it, and it would affect the whole colony of ants or termites that you're targeting. The devastating thing about fipronil or termidor is that it is bad for bees. It's been proven and to harm bees by uh, European courts. They um, banned it until it got reintroduced under um, protest, I think. I'll just grab a quick drink. Too deep into fipronil, let's talk about bifenthrin. Bifenthrin, the favourite thing that pest controllers like to say is it's 30 times less toxic than table salt. Well, that's great, but table salt will kill you if you have three tablespoons. So I'm sure that over the 20 years of pest control, we're all ingesting more than uh, three tablespoons of bifenthrin. So yeah, maybe you are taking lethal dosage without even knowing. Which actually can't happen now that I've remembered it because bifenthrin doesn't build up in your system. Uh, the best thing is it leaves within two to three days, so there's no build up of it in your system. It's used extensively in hair flea washes uh, and hair um, mite treatments, lice treatments, and also so many pet shampoos. It's ridiculous. I always make it a point to tell the dog washers they should be using gloves all the time because they are exposing themselves to much more bifenthrin than I ever will. So if you have a dog washer friend, tell them the stuff for washing your dogs in is the same grade as the stuff that the professionals use. Well, hopefully it's the same grade as the stuff the professionals use. So get that camera back. <coughs> so, the best thing about bifenthrin is the small amount that you actually have to do apply it. It's very insect specific, so the actual amount that you're exposing people to is a lot less than you were of older chemicals. So whereas you'd be mixing litres and litres of things in, in your, in, say, into 100 litres, now you're mixing, into 100 litres, you're mixing 100 mils of bifenthrin when it's pure. So a litre of the bifenthrin mix goes in, but only 100 mils in that 100 litres of water is the actual bifenthrin. So most properties have about 100 mils of um, bifenthrin around them, maybe 200 for larger and larger properties. Um, inside, we're down to five mils, five milliliters. If, nah, that's not right, because that's just if you use the whole a whole five litre container sprayer inside, which I don't. I would get through three or four houses, so a litre and a half, that would be seven mils mixed. Yeah, seven mils. Yeah. That's by fifth of aqua max mix. So the actual amount you're exposed to, to get rid of the, well, not exposed to, exposed, but the amount that you're applying is only five to seven mils. So overall, it's something you have to decide for yourself. Do your research, do your studies. Uh, we all know how it went in the past we've trusted large corporations to look after us, don't we? So I always take everything they say with a grain of salt. You won't find me being the first person to use the latest products because I would rather let all the other suckers out there try the latest products. That way if there's a problem with them, I'm not the guy with the problem, you're not the crew dealing with the problem. Because like I always say, it's always easier to spray than to unspray something. So if you're in doubt, don't apply until you're 100% certain you're happy with whatever you're applying to your property, it's your house, it's your family safety, it's your pet safety, and it's up to you to make sure that you look after their safety. And hopefully I can be a partner in that and I can help you make the correct decision. 
but at the end of the day, it's your decision to decide whether anything that's applied to your house or done to you or your property is safe for you and your family. And I will 100% back you in your decision. So if you don't want to spray things, we can use baits. If you don't want to use baits, we can spray things. We can do combinations so it minimizes everything. But overall, now we're at the level where inside the house, it's the baits doing the work. Unless it's spiders, we still need to spray for spiders. But <coughs> It's totally possible to get rid of cockroaches without spraying one drop. It's totally possible to get rid of ants without spraying one drop. It just takes a little bit longer and also costs a little bit more. But the actual effect overall is fantastic. Because once you get rid of the population, the baits remain there. So any population that comes later, they get killed and destroyed by the baits safely without anyone else having to be exposed to anything or any other animals having to be exposed to anything. They're very specific baits that only target cockroaches or the ant bait only targets ants. And there's also different variations for different formulations, but what really matters in the, the day is not so much the formulation to get rid of them because a lot, there's four or five different chemicals that are very effective in bait form now. But what matters most these days is the way they're manufactured and the way the attractants are made because 99.99% of the bait is basically insect through to attract them so the ant baits that I use are a little bit more watery because ants are liquid feeders uh, I like to use clear ant baits just so they don't look disgusting to you guys it's only a little tiny dab it's not like it's anything major but it's still good to have it behind hinges in window sills where you can't touch it or knock it out the way because it's much more effective the longer it lasts and it just sticks around and you're paying for the money you might as well leave the bait there to work for as long as possible there's differences in the bait, you know, there's $7 bait tubes or there's $75 bait tubes. Guess which one I'm using. Um, and they pay for themselves for the long run because you don't need to um, do callbacks and people love it. And a lot of the times when they call me up, it's like, are you still using the same bait? Please bait, that bait stuff works, I love the bait. So people that are most skeptical end up being the biggest believers because they're the ones that want to get the best result. And I promise you, I want to get the best result as well. It's important to me. So there you have it, a bit more information about biofenthrin. I believe it's the best chemical available in the world on the market today. That's why I buy it off of people that manufactured it and invented the molecule uh, because they manufacture it in Australia and America. And I like those two places when it comes to manufacturing, they've got high standards and high quality. So hopefully you got a bit more information and I'll see you out there.